So hey, what's going on everyone, Kid here, and today we are talking about season reviews. A show where I sit down to talk to you about my top 5 favorite anime from the previous season. Spoiler alert for today, I have more than 5 anime for you. Uh, this season was really polarizing for me. There was some good, bad, mediocre. But I still found a way to put together a good list for you guys. Hopefully you'll like it. Let me know how you feel in the comment section. As always, if I missed something good or didn't talk about an anime that you thought was stocked here, again, let me know. With that all out of the way, let's talk about some anime. So I thought I'm Standing on a Million Lives would be a whole lot worse than it actually is. The story is nothing special. Yotsia and his classmates are summoned. By the game masters, these freaky humanoid time travelers with half a head to save the world, their world, from an impending doom. To do this, they are sent to an isekai to train and complete missions. This is kind of a play on quantum mechanics, and while that is very interesting, they're not really that strong at, at the start. I can forgive the bad animation because this is a new newer studio but the soundtrack is uh really bad and so is the storytelling the characters with the exception of yuka are kind of the only redeeming qualities to this show and with that all being said there's going to be a season two i'll watch it but i don't think you should my reasoning is while the show is fine for what it is i think you'd be better off watching some of the other things on this list We'll get to that in a second. You know, I really wish all hype trains were like this. Burn the Witch has a very deceptive title, but the show is amazing nonetheless. The story follows Nini and Noel as they try to save Galgo Parks from getting executed because he's no a dragon clad, which you don't know what that is. It's just a funny way of saying you attract dragons. Nini and Noel have a you see the special job of keeping those dragons in check and that's kind of where the story gets loose i mean if you can you can call it a story the movie is great but they kind of threw away the story to try to fit in as much lore as they could and there are various easter eggs but with a short one time like that there's only so much you can do let's just say they did their best the animation is top tier and the carries and the characters really carry the lackluster story. So after that crazy cliffhanger back in season 2, I was ready for an all-out war in season 3 of Golden Connolly. We haven't gotten there yet and while this season does have all the great elements of the past seasons, I think it focuses more on world building and giving depth to an already rich cast of good characters. Side note, most of, if not all, the main characters are connected in some way. I'll let you find out how. But I'll just say most, most of it is very interesting. I think, I don't actually know how someone in the story hasn't put two and two together yet, but with everything moving as fast as it does, I can understand it and see how someone could just brush it off. Season 3 storytelling has been a great ride, and it never left me wanting to skip the filler. Wilk may be dead, but there's still a lot of questions to answer. There's the goal to find Ogata and Kido Rankin to stop. Oh, and we've forgotten about Hijikata's group. Don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of tension as we... Follow Suki Moto hot on the heels of Kilo Rankin. And now that we know Ashirka is the key to the gold, and that there are a few questions left. Where is it and why did Wilk do it? Is he telling the truth about he didn't kill the Ainu? Uh, but I guess we'll get those answers in season four. So sometimes I wonder if there is actually a bad challenge out there. Of course, I don't know any, and Jujutsu Kaisen isn't one of them. Yes, the hype train was on point this time, and can I just say that the people at NACA are really killing the anime game right now. Yuji, 
really he can't catch a break in this show. After losing his grandfather, becoming the vessel for Sakuna, the King of Curses, and did I mention he's on death row for being a vessel? Yeah, it can only get worse for this guy. Still, we get to follow his journey as he works to become a jujitsu sorcerer. Kaizen's story is a bit slow to start, but once he does, you really get a feel for how big the world is. Not only are there wild and dangerous curses out there, but we also have to deal with the political turmoil, which is happening within the network of jiu-jitsu sorcerers. So even when you think that, oh, this is just another day on the job, there are, there's always someone working behind the scenes to do something, uh, shall we say, not on the up and up. Since this is a shonen, of course you know the anime, the animation is top tier and the supporting cast is both fun and quirky. It does have its light hearty moments, but I expect this to be a darker, more polarizing story, given that even on the good side, given that even on the good guy side, there is inviting. So, Noglis, it is just as the title says it is. It gives me no gliss to watch it. And while the animation is great and the later story is solid, I think the slow pace of the anime just kills my enjoyment of it. Rizel woke up from an 820-year nap not too long ago, but I can't tell if he's awake or not. The dude only really does anything when he feels like uh, the show is at a breaking point. And all this filler without plot is killing with a good series that's good again. I already have mixed feelings about the vampire genre as a whole, and Noblis kind of solidifies that. While there are some standout characters like everyone but Rizel, I wish Webtoons would just give me more Tower of God. I would be down for that. Good Romeo and Juliet stories are few and far between, so I'm glad I got to watch Our Last Crusade, Rise of a New World. That's a really long name, and that's the last time I'm going to say it, because what are these titles at this point? Elise and her maid Ren are just straight up a joy to watch, and while each scum may feel a bit flat, that's putting it nicely, by the way, it's because of Itsuka and the main cast that I can endure the blatant stupidity that is the Empire. Hating people because they can use magic is really stupid, but a believable motive for an all-out war. The show just throws away great villains like they're hot garbage, and it's kind of weird, but... I like the show. It's one of those little gems to come out of a mediocre genre, and I hope we can get more seasons of it. Maybe even a good ending. Shows like this tend to have bad endings, so I'm not gonna hold out for it, but Yashahime Half Demon Princess. If you haven't seen Yashahime, it follows the daughter of Inuyasha and Shoshongaru. They are demon hunting and fighting to regain Setsuna's lost memories. Everything in Yashihime is solid from the story to the animation. The soundtrack is nice, and while I do wish they would use more help or more than just comedic effect, I still love her character to death, and you can feel the hint of their mothers and fathers in both Moraha and Setsuna. Not in Toa, but Moraha is happy yet short tempered, and her attitude is just like Inuyasha. It's so amazing. That along with Setsuna's indifference, she feels a lot like Shishongaru. And Toa is the odd one out. She's a bit annoying at times, but you can feel the love that she has for her sister and the regret that is there from their lost connection. Really what keeps me on the edge of my seat is the mystery surrounding the old nine cast. And that's kind of the secondary focus of the show. If you like the original Inuyasha, you'll love Yashihime, the story, the characters, the animation is all really solid and really well done. That's the video. If you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, hit that button. Get subscribed for more content as always from me Monday and Tuesday. 
yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.